engaging the community since 1970. This is WIS Awareness. Good morning and thanks for joining me for Awareness Today. I'm your host, Leland Pinder. On Saturday, October 27th, we saw 11 people killed at a synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The people at that church were doing something they normally did, not bothering anyone, but simply because of who they are. They were targeted and shot dead by a radical anti-Semite. It's a hate crime that's being called one of the worst crimes against Jewish Americans in our history. And in response to what happened, the Jewish community here in Columbia and the greater community came together immediately in support, memory, and unity against that violence. People from all backgrounds came together at Beth Shalom Synagogue in Columbia. Rabbis from all three of Columbia's Jewish congregations led the service alongside the president of the Jewish Federation of Columbia. They spoke about finding unity in the face of hatred and violence. Our love for each other is stronger than your hate. You look at this gathering of men and women of different races and religions, and you see weakness. We look at this proud, dignified, diverse communities of faith, standing united together against evil, and we see strength. Very powerful moments that evening. And this morning, I'm joined by Rabbi Eric Malo, who is the rabbi at Tree of Life in Columbia. And this is Cheryl Nell of the Jewish Federation of Columbia and Dr. Adrian Bird, president of South Carolina Interfaith Partners. Thank you all for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. So absolutely. First, you know, I just want to start getting an initial reaction from all of you about what you were feeling and what you thought after you heard out what happened there in Pittsburgh. We'll start with you, Reverend. It, it was devastating. Uh, as a rabbi, uh, and I'm in a congregation that shares the same name as the Tree of Life Synagogue, and my, uh, my heart broke that morning. It was the worst attack on a Jewish community, on Jewish people in the United States in recorded history. And uh, to say that we are devastated is an understatement. But to say that we are motivated is also an understatement. We're getting ready to go here. How about you, Cheryl? I don't know any other way to describe it than heart sick. Um, I was actually at my son's soccer game without my phone and came home and had a message from Dr. Bird all the way from England um, and uh, saw the news. And I wish I was more surprised. Um, part of my job is to monitor anti-Semitism, and in the last several years, unfortunately, the question of if was no longer on my mind, but when and where. Um, and yet, it still was difficult for me to wrap my head around. Dr. Bird? Well, as Cheryl said, I was in England at the time, and when I heard the news, obviously uh, heartbroken. It was just such a numbing feeling. Uh, and then I quickly moved into, into uh, the mindset of interfaith partners of South, Car South Carolina. How can we mobilize to show our support for the Jewish community at this time? So I immediately contacted Cheryl and started those, those wheels turning. But yes, devastating. That's why we're here, to stand together in the midst of these, these tragic circumstances. And that's what we saw on display at the uh, temple there earlier in the week. Uh, Rabbi Malo, you are obviously very involved in the community here. Uh, how has this affected your friends? your families uh, that you know, people at your, your temple? People are coming in with questions. How do we face this tragedy, adults, and, and how do we talk to our children about it? And uh, what I've been counseling my congregants uh, to say to their children is to tell them as much as they need to know. Uh, don't hide the fact that something bad happened, but tell them as much as they need to, to know. And, and really, in communicating that, talk through what happened with them. You don't have to go into all the details, but talk through why people are feeling sad. Don't, approach this head on. You don't want this to, to be buried deep down for our kids. You want our kids, we want our kids to really understand what's happened and how we're going to move forward. Why, why there's so much an, of, of, of an outpouring of love from this community. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and why we are going to be working with our partners, or we're going to be seeing so many partners in our building, uh, and so many, so many partners from the Sheriff's Department to our interfaith partners in our community, why we're going to be coming together more and more mm -hmm. 
uh, why, 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 there, there's going to be a greater visibility. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and our kids need to understand that. And our adults need to understand that, too. We need, we need time to process these things. And that's why we had our, uh, the, our, our, our service, mm -hmm. our community service at, at Beth Shalom Synagogue. This, this was an opportunity for us to process out loud, to, uh, to mourn together, and to, uh, to really spread light together. I think this is something that a lot of people, for instance, like racism, you know, when I say it's a thing of the past, but clearly racism, anti-Semitism is something that still exists today. And incidents of uh, an anti-Semitic nature have happened in the past, but it seems in recent years, take a look here at this graphic from the Anti-Defamation League. Just recently, they've spiked significantly. Um, Cheryl, what do you, why do you think that is and what do you make of that? Sure. Well, you know, it. It's very difficult to pinpoint, of course, but um, what we have seen is social media really gives an outlet where there wasn't one before. So whereas anti-Semitism has always existed, you might have seen it in the, the form of flyers, which unfortunately we're still seeing you know, spread across university campuses, but social media has really acted as a megaphone and amplified anti-Semitic rhetoric. Mm -hmm. It's very easy, unfortunately, for someone to take, whether it's a conspiracy theory or whether it is some text that has been taken out of context and make it into a meme and it goes viral. And, um, you know, it's really up to all of us, just as it is in the case of racism and in the case of sexism and Islamophobia to, when we see this to say this is not okay mm -hmm. and dr bird i want to get you in here with the severity of this incident what do you think this means or what does this do to the fight against anti-semitism in our communities anti-semitism is a poison uh it's it's a hate and we need to work together to find the antidote for those poisons um, how we do that? We talk to each other. We get to know one another. We build bridges across uh, our religious communities. Uh, the first thing we do when, when there's prejudice or persecution or hatred uh, towards any of our religious uh, groups in South Carolina, we are very diverse here in South Carolina, we ask that community, how can we help? We are here with you, we, su we support you, and we will do all that we can to, to, to find the solutions to these problems, to get to the core of these, these hatreds, to talk to the right people, to do the right things in order to take a stand against these, these vicious, vicious things. Cheryl, a second ago, you talked about how social media plays a role in this and so many other things. Mm -hmm. And that's typically just a very surface uh, approach mm -hmm. to some really complex issues. Right. And so a lot of times people who espouse or express these things might not even fully understand what's going on. Absolutely. And, you know, and part of the problem is the normalization mm -hmm. of it. So because we see it more often in the, whether it's a form of a meme or whatever it is, um, it's become normalized and it's our responsibility to fight against that normalization. And Dr. or excuse me, Rabbi Malo, um, kids obviously spend a lot of time on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you have. Um, we talked about talking to your kids about this, and you mentioned how you're doing that, how you advise people to do that. Um, what have you seen so far? How are the kids responding as you've addressed that with them? Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been very open with our students, especially our older students, and uh, we've talked through it. And they, you know, they, they come to me and they say, well, I'm more afraid actually to go to my high school mm -hmm. than I am to go to my synagogue. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's, I, I, they're facing a reality that is unprecedented. We've not seen anything like this to, uh, you know, to this point. Uh, and it's especially hard to be, to be both targeted, you know, just as a student in general uh, in this day and age, but then also as a, as a Jew. Uh, and what that means to be a Jewish person today uh, in this age where anti-Semitism is once again climbing to new heights. Mm -hmm. uh, so those conversations have been very open, very honest. And I think another point for parents is to, you know, watch television with your kids. Make sure you're watching what they're doing on social media. Uh, have that awareness. So, because if, you know, they may be exposed to something they don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. And you as a parent 
uh, are playing a key role in interpreting what they're seeing and making sure that the right messages are being sent home for those children. Dr. Bird, very quickly. Yes, we went as a family to the gathering at the, at the um, Beth Shalom Synagogue uh, this week, and my daughter, the first thing she did, she's not Jewish, the first thing she did when she got home was write to her teachers to say, I want a meeting, I want to know how we can discuss these things in our school, what can our schools do. The next day, yesterday, she actually had uh, a meeting with all her f uh, grade five students to say there's resources out there, what can we do? The Anti-Defamation League has put some great resources out applicable to different age groups to say this is how you can, can broach these subjects with, with our children. All right, thank you all for that. When we come back here on Awareness, we're talking about security. It's a consideration that more and more churches are having to take. We'll be right back. Do you suffer from back pain? Try Dr. Ho's Back Belt, a back pain solution that is now covered by many insurance plans, even Medicare. The belt allowed me to walk for the first time in a year without a cane. Dr. Ho's Back Belt is a patented decompression back brace designed to relieve back pain. It expands to stretch tight muscles and traction your lower back, all while providing strong support. If you have back pain, Dr. Ho recommends you try his belt even if you suffered for many years. Since I started using the belt, I felt almost instant relief. After about a half an hour of using the belt, the pain diminished a lot, and now it's all gone. Doctors recommend back braces for chronic and acute back pain, degenerative discs, herniated or bulging discs, sciatica-related back pain, trouble sleeping due to back pain, back pain from sitting, driving, or lifting, and back pain from sports and exercise. I think every patient with back pain should be wearing this belt. Imagine finally getting relief for your back pain and being active again. I've had back pain problems for the past uh, four or five years. Nothing gave me instant relief except for the doctor whole belt. Before I couldn't really move, couldn't play with the kids. And now after using it, I'm young again. So if you have back pain, have your Medicare card available and call us now. Our operators can check if you're eligible to receive your very own Dr. Ho's back belt at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Get back to living the life you love. You can wear Dr. Ho's back belt while walking, relaxing, driving, doing housework, lifting, playing sports, and even while sleeping. Just pump it up and feel the relief. It's really working. It's already beginning to relieve my back pain. And I can feel it really stretching the tight muscles in my back. And I can't believe how good it feels. Call now. You deserve to get relief from your back pain. And if you're eligible, you may receive your own belt at little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. You'll get Dr. Ho's back belt, easy-to-use hand pump, and back rehabilitation DVD. This is a limited time offer. Call now and get relief for your back. Back pain doesn't have to limit your life. Promote what makes your business great with Vistaprint. Whether it's a business card, a banner, or a postcard, we have the paper stocks, sizes, and design options to create marketing that's right for your business. Give it a try with 500 standard business cards starting at just $9.99 when you use code VP500 at Vistaprint.com. Welcome back this morning. We're now joined by Lieutenant Dominic Pagano of the Richland County Sheriff's Department. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And I want to ask you, you know a lot about security and uh, building safety and whatnot, but is there something specific you can say to people who are targeted, uh, targets of violence due to their race or ethnicity or religion? Like, what can they do in their places of worship? So I think everyone has to understand that the new accepted social norm is to have a law enforcement officer on your premise at your place of worship when anytime you have large gatherings. That is going to be the number one source of deterrence is obviously presence first. And, and you obviously know law enforcement officers are highly trained. That they know the protocols and policies with active shooter response. And of course, if you do have a, a suspect, you know, that wants to target innocent people, they see that officer, they're going to think twice. You know, they're going to look for an obtuse time when it's more of what we would call a soft target instead of a hard target. And you all are right now working with um, Jewish t congregations here in Colombia on that very uh, topic. Absolutely. And how Absolutely. are you doing that? So that's one of many aspects of it. The other aspect is to provide uh, no-cost training to the facilities, everything from awareness training. When we talk about awareness training, we talk about threat recognition training. Hey, you know, common signs and symptoms. Obviously, we're in South Carolina. It's very hot. You know, it's a 100-degree day. You have someone approaching, uh, trying to get in your facility with a, uh, you know, a big starter jacket with a backpack. That You know, that's a clue. Everything to lockdown procedures. If an event happens, does your uh, place of worship 
Do they have the capability of locking the doors, securing the doors? Do they have those policies and procedures? And then everything from universal background checks to training on mass violence. So it's, it's a big circle that we have to encompass there. What's kind of the conversation in the law enforcement community of having to really go in and protect these places, churches, schools, you know, uh, movie theaters, et cetera, that you really didn't have to, you know, several years ago, but now it is the norm, like you said. Uh, it is, uh, like it is, is the, the new social norm. Uh, we're accepting it. Uh, unfortunately, it's something that we have to do, but it's our job. You know, this is a, a calling of self-service. This is what, what we're here to do, and we're absolutely going to do it. And Cheryl, I know you can speak about how the Federation is working with RCSD as mm -hmm. well. Yes, so um, Richland County is definitely um, a partner for our entire Jewish community on this. Mm -hmm. um, we're also, we work very closely with our local FBI. They also provide the no-cost training um, for situational awareness for houses of worship. Um, and we do have also a synagogue that is in the jurisdiction of Forest Acres Police, um, and we work closely with them as well. What are some of the things that you've been learning with Forest Acres Police or RCSD that you can really disseminate to other people? I mean, it's really, it's going to sound cliche, um, but it's really, you see something, you say something. It's, it's um, not being afraid of potentially offending somebody, that if somebody looks like their behavior is somewhat suspicious or out of the norm, that it's much better to be safe than sorry. Um, you may recall early last year there was a foiled terrorist uh, plot against a synagogue in the Myrtle Beach area. Mm -hmm. And the reason that that was foiled was because people spoke up and said something. And, and uh, Lieutenant, if you can talk about how a lot of times people think, you know, gosh, that's terrible that happened where it happened, but it'll never happen at home or in my backyard. And that's really not a position or stance the community can take, nor law enforcement. Exactly. And when you actually look at the, the data, the statistics from 2000 all the way up to May of 2017, there was over 250 active shooter events in the United States. Places of worship represent about 4% of that. Uh, places of business are always number, number one, followed by by schools. Mm -hmm. But most of these attacks have happened in communities known for their residential stability and their affluence. So to think that it's not going to happen because we live in a really good area is not a good mindset. They happen all all over the place. Yeah, people who carry out these acts really exactly. don't know who they're doing it against, so that's not important to them if they are determined to do this. Exactly. All right, well, thank you so much for your input. Greatly appreciated. Rabbi Malo, is there anything you wanted to add? We're just so grateful for our partners at the Richland County Sheriff's Department. They really keep us safe. We've, we've had a security guard for the past uh, so well, several years mm -hmm. uh, present at our, at our Shabbat evening services, our Sabbath services. And uh, I just can't say enough good things. They've been really, really helpful to us. Uh, shout out to uh, Investigator Oates, who's been our coordinator over there at, at the temple. And, and uh, the security detail has been just excellent and yeah, we, I just can't say enough good things. Yeah, just a, an extra layer <laughs> We're so of grateful. safety. Yeah. Yeah. And right. caring, too. They're very caring. Yes. They, yeah. they care about protecting us. Yes. Appreciate All that. right. Fantastic. Thank you again. And we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to talk about moving forward, how the uh, weeks and days ahead, what those might look like as we move on and move past what's happened in Pittsburgh. Get rid of musty odors and excess moisture with Damprid. If your house has moisture problems, Damprid fixes it. I put Damprid everywhere there's moisture. It's easy to use and it works great. Damprid moisture absorbers eliminate the excess moisture that causes musty odors and lasts for up to 60 days. The moisture in this Damprid bag means no musty odors on my clothes. It's amazing how Damprid pulls all this moisture out of the air to prevent moisture damage in my basement. Rid your house of musty odors and excess moisture. Get rid of dampness with Damprid. Promote what makes your business great with Vistaprint. Whether it's a business card, a banner, or a postcard, we have the paper stocks, sizes, and design options to create marketing that's right for your business. Give it a try with 500 standard business cards starting at just $9.99 when you use code VP500 at Vistaprint.com. 
Burlington isn't Coat Factory anymore. They still sell coats. Yes, dear. We get our boots here. All kinds of coats. Scars. Look how cute. We saved a bundle. All the great brands at a fraction of the cost. I came to Burlington to buy a coat. I got socks, boots, scarves. Hello, I'm Joel Lurie. If you have questions about Medicare, we can help. This year, there are more options than ever. And we want to help you find the Medicare plan that accepts your local hospital and doctor and includes your prescription drugs. Plus, there are options now that include dental, vision, and even a fitness benefit. We are local, and whether in our office or in the comfort of your own home, let's sit down and talk about your Medicare options. Give us a call, 803-256-2067. I'm attorney Akeeman Astapulo. I've been practicing law for over 30 years. We got a $600,000 settlement for head on collision. Don't scream, call Akeem. Dial all twos now. To get your attorney, dial all twos. Welcome back. One of the more poignant moments during that service you talked about earlier was when Jennifer Pinckney, the widow of Senator Clemente Pinckney, lit a candle there at the service at Beth Shalom. Of course, her husband died in the shooting in Charleston at Mother Emanuel AME in 2015. I believe we have some video of that. We can show you those moments there. Um, let's open up this segment, Dr. Byrd, discussing some of the similarities between what happened in Pittsburgh and what happened in Charleston. Absolutely, and of course there are some differences, but uh, three similarities spring to mind. The first one is that both these atrocities took place in a worship space, sanctuaries. These are sacred spaces. Uh, the second thing is that these were both incidents born from hate, and that's something that we really have to address. What drove this, this hatred? Um, those are the things that we have to get to the bottom of to, to challenge those things. Uh, the third thing is really the outpouring of support that came as a result of both of these tragedies. Both in Charleston, in Pittsburgh, around the nation, folks have come out, interfaith communities, people of no faith, coming to say, we are here, we want to stand together. This is the America that is great mm -hmm. when we stand together like that. Cheryl, we talked about what's happening in our community. What needs to happen on a more broad and global scale to really address this issue of anti-Semitism? Sure. So one of the things I think we need is a global definition on anti-Semitism, which is the legislature is currently working on. Um, no longer can we say... It, you know anti-Semitism when you see it. Mm -hmm. There needs to be consistency for reporting um, and, and to hold people accountable. The other thing is we really need the State Department to fill the vacancy for the special envoy against anti-Semitism. Um, and, and beyond that, more of what you're seeing happen as a result from what happened in Pittsburgh. So, you know, we had a wonderful interfaith gathering of hope at Beth Shalom. We had one um, at the University of South Carolina later in the week. That is not an end. It needs to be a beginning. Those moments, um, David, when Jennifer Pinkney lit that candle in that room that was full of people of, of all different faiths and walks of life, um, can you just, like, describe what that was like, just to go back to that moment real quick. Well, really, that was a, that's a moment I'll never forget. My family was there, and to watch that moment and to talk with uh, Mrs. Pinckney and her children uh, later after the service was over, uh, that, there was just a resonance. There was a resonance of hope. Every day is difficult for that family and for all those who go through such traumas, and yet there is hope that is found in being together. Uh, it's, it's the only way that we can move forward together. It's always interesting when terrible things bring people together the way they do in such a positive way on that side. Um, Rabbi Balo, just in general, where do we go from here? How does the moving, moving on process, without forgetting, look like? I think you're absolutely right. I think you know, tragedy uh, generally, it, it, and it's a shame it takes a tragedy mm -hmm. to bring the most people together, but that's what we have become accustomed to. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and from here... Uh, we're going to be working with Mayor, Mayor Benjamin, who is going to be putting together a task force to really combat uh, and dispel hate in our community, really tr in an attempt to make the Midlands sort of the shining beacon of what it can look like to live in uh, what King, uh, Martin Luther King called the beloved community, mm -hmm. uh, which is people just sharing in each other's cultures and beliefs and traditions and having a just a, a basic and a and, and a, a a general love for one another mm. that uh that that just crosses all boundaries it, and 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 really uh 
banishes this whole notion that we're so divided and we're so tribal. It's like, no, we, we really need to see past that. And, and you know, this, it, if it ta- you know, it's, it's, it's horrible that it takes a tragedy to get there, but hopefully this is a big wake-up call for some folks mm-hmm. to say, you know, this is what we need to do to move forward. We need to look past this hate. We need to embrace the light, and we need to come together right now. Yeah, it's, those are very important, poignant words. Thank you for that. Thank you all for being here today. We're going to take another quick break here. We'll be right back here on Awareness. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, or blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain or knee pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace or knee brace covered by Medicare at little to absolutely no cost to you. These professional-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, rheumatoid and osteoarthritis, spinal disorders, stenosis, and other painful back problems. Call 1-800-643-2129. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. If you have or are eligible for Medicaid, please listen closely. You may be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan from WellCare Health Plans with zero or low plan premium. Call 1-866-907-5952 now. That's 1-866-907-5952. Representatives will provide detailed information and help see if you qualify. WellCare provides access to a large network of local and regional doctors and hospitals. Plus, some plans may include benefits for dental, vision, hearing, Part D prescription drugs, and more. WellCare is contracted with Medicare to provide plans that may be right for you. Call 1-866-907-5952 now. That's 1-866-907-5952. Burlington isn't Coat Factory anymore. They still sell coats. Yes, dear. We get our boots here. All kinds of coats. Scars. Look how cute. We saved a bundle. All the great brands at a fraction of the cost. I came to Burlington to buy a coat. I got socks, boots, scarves. WIS loves to share stories of people making a difference. People who work to build a better community. If you know someone who should be highlighted as a community builder, nominate them at WISTV.com slash builder. Thanks to all my guests today. If you want to learn more about them, head to interfaithpartnersofsc.org, jewishcolumbia.org, or tolsc.org. Have a great rest of your morning. Thanks for joining us here on Awareness. No one wants-